This. This was the game people were freaking out over when it first came out. I just... Really? I mean, I expected a lot worse given some reactions, but... Okay, let's get this out of the way. The fact that this game has fan servicey elements does not make me find it creepy at all. I can understand how some may not want to get into it, but the audience is clear and I prefer to judge it if it's good based on that standard. And if, you know, it actually works. This game is pretty tame all things considered, especially given what I had to deal with in Valkyrie Drive and Estimal Versus. I have reviewed porn before, guys, so I know when a game is kinda limping. Speaking of, fuck Sakura Nova and its uncreative bullshit. That thing was over before it even began, threw out a ton of potential with its sex scenes when you could have easily had one hell of an orgy with that witch and- Alright, um, I would like to take the moment to apologize for that. Anyway, you play as a guy named Hodai, the average high school student who was eventually struck by Cupid's arrow, in the form of a gun and given far too much when the angel Ekoro tries to take her test but panics after seeing a devil preparing to interfere. This leads to what you would expect. Every girl in the school, including teachers and even a ghost at one point, all want Hodai for themselves. But what would normally be the best fantasy of all time is interrupted when Ekoro states that if he doesn't find his true love, he will never find true love, period. Fortunately, Ekoro helps him in dealing with all the love-struck ladies thanks to his new abilities, and thus must try and find true love with the closest thing being his childhood friends, who are unaffected by this mess. Then, there are apparently also demon hunters hunting down the little devil that's wreaking havoc on the school. While your choices of which girl to go after are limited at first, they do expand the more you beat the game. Even your choices can affect a girl's affections, and change the ending you end up with. This can even involve getting two girls at once. Though my personal favorite is Ekoro herself, that while it doesn't have a flat-out confession scene, takes away a certain game mechanic I hated. The character is extremely likable, and she's, well, She's really cute. Plus, the story did surprise me with some generally good moments between characters that kept me hooked on the plot. That being said, the story can still be ridiculous, whether it's Shinobu pulling a gun as Hodai confesses his love, or being told a demon has to stab him in the butt with her spear to fix this mess. And yet, I still find it charming. Not as deep as I can say the story of Homer of Senra and Kagura, but it's all very cute, and the presentation makes it hard for me to consider this game sexy. That and some of the girls' faces during the Double Piece animation. I really think their expressions might have needed some fine-tuning here and there. Plus, some of the choices that are supposed to be right are really nonsensical. The only real annoying character I found was Corona, the devil in this game, as she can be a bit annoying at times with the way she keeps emphasizing the word hell, and yet still less annoying than Zamasu. The game is a real shooter, and surprisingly competent too, with a reticle that moves just right. You can even zoom in that, while it takes away the speed, does make it much easier to look through objects and find certain items to complete subquests that net you more money. You target girls using the pheromone shots, which will knock them out for a time since you are likely going to run into the same set of girls again for whatever reason. And they can damage you through words, kisses, and... Stomping on my crotch. Yeah, not everyone is totally in love with you thanks to the annoying devil, and some of these girls will get more violent. So as you play normally and seek out their weak spots that are easy to find thanks to certain signals I grew to memorize, you won't have that hard of a time. Now, if you're getting their measurements or distracted by certain assets, then things might be a tad harder. The boss fights in between all these stages can also be fun and easy depending on the upgrades you get, like boosting your attack power, but they are nice sets of skill in shooting as fast and accurate as possible, while not getting distracted by pervy magazines. The dudes with tentacles were by far the easiest and kind of felt like a waste of time. And yes, while the hentai theme seemed to be growing the more I talk about this game, I still didn't really feel all that creeped out. It's not as if literal hentai is thrown into my face. Unless it's suggestive like these actions, and I shouldn't have to explain why here. Since the game uses touch controls, you're going to be using the touchpad for various situations in certain levels. And there are definitely some that are very... suggestive. And also very easy, honestly. I heard complaints how the touch controls were hard, but I never had that kind of issue. Now, it's not my preferred way of playing, but I don't understand why people found this bad. Also, the PC kind of eliminates this issue with the analog sticks. Although I do admit, I feel a bit odd doing the option, and I hate to see myself actually rubbing the PS4 controller. The Doki Doki field is also very handy in taking out multiple girls at once when surrounded, especially helpful when you consider that the stages constantly move fast. However, if you are aiming 100% a certain route by choosing certain choices, it has the chance to lower and increase stats depending on the girl. Plus, buying more camera angles or using this on more than one girl feels wasteful unless you can encounter a certain problem. The final Doki Doki mode is perhaps the absolute worst mechanic to this game, though. During the game's climax, with the exception of Ekoro and now you know why she's the best girl, 
This involves staring at the girls and not much else. You just choose spots to build up the meter and it's not really typical at all. It's just boring to me. The final verdict for Galgan is... Buy it. At least if you're into games like this. At this point, I feel the price is worth it, and there's quite a bit of replayability that can last you a few days. Now, if only this game didn't sell costume DLC like every other fan service game. I'm the smartest moron, and tell me if you actually bought the super expensive DLC. I need to know how many people actually did this. I won't judge or anything. For God's sakes, I licked the controller. I think you have the moral high ground here.